Dios and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Gracia y paz para ti en el nombre de Creador Jesucristo y Espíritu Santo. Good evening. I want to welcome you to our Holy Thursday worship service. Um, my name is Joe Hudson and I am the pastor here at um, the new church, Chiesa Nuova United Church of Christ. And I'm so pleased to share with you that this evening, Reverend Carrie Smith, who is the pastor of Greenland Hills United Methodist Church, is here sharing in our service. We are so glad to have her participate with us. And we are so glad that you are here, that you have found us online, and that you are worshiping with us on this very special evening. And we just want to remind you that uh, just because we have to keep our distances from each other and we have to uh, isolate in our homes and stay home, uh, that doesn't mean that we need to be socially isolated. We can connect very truly and very deeply through worship services like this and other online opportunities. So we're really glad that you are here. I just want to uh, remind you that we invite you to participate fully in this worship service. So. Pray with us, sing with us, and when it comes time for um, registering your presence and sharing that you are here and uh, making a gift to the church and, and Holy Communion, we want you to participate in every way. So take a moment right now and go to our website, thenewchurch.com, and click on the live stream link, and you will see there that you can register your presence, you can ask for prayer requests, you can make a gift to the church, but you can also download a digital worship guide so that you can fully participate in the service. And take a moment while you're at it and grab some juice and a cracker or a piece of bread and share. be prepared to share with us as we celebrate the Feast of Holy Communion this evening. Um, and um, I hope that as we worship, you will exchange greetings and make comments and maybe even post a picture of yourself and your worship space and or maybe your communion elements and and interact with each other online because that will help all of us to feel more connected to each other just a reminder that tomorrow night you are invited to participate in a good friday service that is being hosted by Greenland Hills United Methodist Church. It will be in the Taize tradition, which means that the songs kind of repeat and, and, and so you are able to catch the tune. And, and the story of the crucifixion, uh, Jesus' passion and crucifixion will be told and it will be a beautiful service. So we invite you to uh, come online and participate with us. And you can find that on our new church website. Also, I want to remind you that this coming Sunday, believe it or not, uh, <laughs> April the 12th is Easter Sunday, and we will be right here in this space to celebrate the high holy day of our faith, Easter Sunday. And we will celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, and we will hear words of hope and promise that have been given to us over time and space through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So sign on at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning and help us celebrate this very special day. And while we're worshiping, our youth will be meeting with our youth minister, Pastor Yadi Martinez, and we are excited for them. They're getting ready to have an Easter fashion show, and, and they're all going to dress up and wear their best uh, outfits for Easter. And uh, then following our worship at noon, we're going to go online on a Zoom uh, shared video and we will be having an Easter reception. Uh, so get your comfort food and get your drinks and we'll all talk and, and celebrate Easter following uh, our, our worship service and we'll celebrate together. So I wonder if now you would take your worship guide and join with me in our greeting for Holy Thursday. Return to God, the God of all mercies. 
for a feast of love has been prepared for God's own. We will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in our mouths. Oh, taste and see the goodness of God. Happy are we who take refuge in God. Oh, magnify our God with me. And let us exalt God's name together. According to Matthew, 
On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says my time is near, I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took a place at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they all became greatly distressed and began to say to Jesus, say to Jesus one after the other, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The human one goes as it is written, but woe to that one by whom the human one is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed Jesus, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then Jesus took a cup and after, drink, after giving thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my life of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Abba's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. May God bless to us the hearing of this ancient word. Amen. Please be seated. say that this day always creeps up on me. I know that it's that when Palm Sunday comes that we're coming to Holy Week and, and I know the whole story. I know the whole story to its very end. And I'm always surprised when we get here. I don't, I don't know what it is that takes me back and causes me to, to try to figure out what, what do you ever say on a night like this? I, I, it feels a little bit like, um, you know, it, it's like when you're watching a scary movie and, um, and, and, and you know that it's getting ready to be bad. And, and, and you want to yell at the people on the screen and say, don't go. Just don't go. And that's what I want to say to Jesus. Don't go. Just don't go. You don't have to do this. Don't go. And evidently I'm in very good company with that because just a few verses back, the disciples were saying, don't go back to Bethany, which is very near Jerusalem. Don't go. There are people who want to kill you. But Jesus is clear about his life and is clear about his connection to God and is clear about his love for Lazarus and Mary and Martha and the others. And so he does this great sacrificial agape love and returns to them. And and so I wonder if the disciples kind of forget all that and then, you know, um, all of a sudden, now they're going to the Passover in an upper room in Jerusalem. I wonder if they've kind of forgotten all the predictions of Jesus' suffering and death that he's given to them. 
and do as he says and go into town and prepare the room and there they go even though I don't want him to there they go off to that upper room celebrate the feast of Passover a, a feast that's all about God saving <laughs> them and God saving us and while there Jesus says one of you will betray me. Now, because we know the end of the story, we point to Judas. Because Judas is the great betrayer, certainly, but, but actually, Jesus says the one who dips his hand in the meal with me will betray me. He doesn't call things out. And truth be told, every last one of them will betray him by either turning him over to the authorities or by deserting him or denying him. I guess we're all pretty much in good company with that too, aren't we? Jesus does this, this thing, this, this generous, gracious, deeply loving thing. He knows they'll scatter. He knows they'll betray him. He knows they'll forget that he told them on the third day he would rise. He knows they'll forget all that, so he in the midst, at the end of this great feast, he takes the simple gifts of the table and makes a new covenant with his life, his, his life. And he says, and the, and the story tells us that he takes the bread and blesses it, giving thanks, and breaks it and gives it to them and says, take and eat, this is my body. And then he takes the cup and blesses it, giving thanks, and gives it to all of them and says, drink from this. This is my life of the covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. So see, already he's doing this loving, forgiving thing before anything even happens. It's a Great love. And it's a love that offers a promise that in broken things and in things poured out, there is new life. I want so much to believe that promise right now. Because the reality is, I'm pretty brokenhearted these days. And I bet you are too. I'm brokenhearted that we're not all here together tonight and that we won't be on Easter Sunday. I'm, I'm brokenhearted for all the lives that have been lost through this pandemic and all the grieving families. I'm, I'm brokenhearted over the people who are sick and I'm brokenhearted the people who've lost their jobs and are struggling to stay afloat and, and I'm brokenhearted for those most marginalized in our society who are suffering the most. And, and I bet you are too. And, and so we need this promise and this truth in that in broken things we find new life, in poured out things we find new life. This is the gift of Jesus. This wondrous love this remarkable truth that is all caught up in his life and his love of God. His life broken and poured for you and me. This is the promise. This wondrous love. Thanks be
Jesus be to power. Amen.
And so with the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion that Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, O God, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. If you feel comfortable in helping to consecrate your meal, if you would extend your hand in a gesture of blessing as we together consecrate this meal. Bless us, therefore, by your Holy Spirit, that as we receive the consecrated bread and the fruit of the vine at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise, we may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. And now, as children of God, redeemed of God, let us join together in saying the prayer that Jesus loved us enough to teach us to pray. Our God in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to gather your elements for the sharing of this feast. And we will take um, the bread together and we will take the cup together. But I want to remind you that all are invited to this table. You don't have to have all the answers about your faith. You can have doubts and questions. You can have a certainty about what this meal is all about, or you can wonder and just accept it as a mystery. All are welcome here, people of um, our Christian faith, people of other faiths, people of no faith at all. Just be willing to come and experience the presence of God found in these simple gifts of great and grim. We will first receive the bread. This is the feast of God's grace given in the life of Jesus. Let us take and eat this bread and remember. And now we will receive the cup. And it's Now let us receive this gift of Jesus' life poured out for all of us. Take and drink and be glad. Amen. Amen. Will you join me as we ask God to, just as we ask God a, a thankful heart for this meal. Will you join me as we pray together? Gracious God, we thank you for this gift that you have given to us, these gifts of bread and juice that remind us that you are alive within us. And so may we now go in, the, in that promise, knowing that we are called to be your people in this world. Thank you for that first gift that you gave to us that Passover night. May it sustain us for the week ahead. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Jesus took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then Jesus said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Abba, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Could you not stay awake with me for one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again Jesus went away for the second time and prayed, My Abba, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again Jesus came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then Jesus came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the human one is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. You see, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the Jesus. Arrest him. At once Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to Judas, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to the disciple, Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my God, who will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which says it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? as though I were a bandit. Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following Jesus at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow says, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest 
priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the one of God. Jesus said, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the human one seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, This Jesus has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse and swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. And Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept. Bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Judas said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed and went out and hanged himself. chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver 
the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner, Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas? Or Jesus who they call the Messiah. For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream of him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross, and when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gold. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there to keep watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus. King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. 
Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourselves. If you are the one of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others, but cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. Thank you. 